What is up? This is Joshua Casper, and welcome to another very quick Ableton Live video tutorial. I'm going to show you how to save your warps so you don't have to re-warp the same song again. Um, I use iTunes to kind of sort my music out usually, so if I come in and I get a track, and this is a track I'm working on actually, it's pretty hot, and I pull it in from iTunes, it essentially iTunes is taking it from where it's stored in the folder. You know, wherever I tell iTunes my folders are, my music folders. Close iTunes, come in here, double click, and I notice that it's not warped, so I come over, come in and double click here, double click here to get rid of it, right click here, set 111 here, and then go ahead and run that. And that's the track I'm working on, by the way. Uh, and then I come back here and just make sure it's warped out the way I like it. And, you know, that's pretty close. Come in, I double click and move it to where it's supposed to be. And now that it's done, I usually, just a quick warping note, I usually come in about midway through to make sure it's right where it needs to be. So anyway, now this is good enough for DJing live. Um, now that I have that, I want to come over to right here and click Save. And now that I've hit Save, it makes a permanent ana analysis file next to the mp3. So now if I delete this and I close Ableton and then I open Ableton again and I come into iTunes um, and I pull that same track and drop it in, uh, you can see that the warp markers are saved. And that will work if you close Ableton and open it, but I'm not going to do that because this is a very short tutorial. Um, anyway, you can do that and I, I hope that helped and I hope you like this track because uh, it's coming out soon.